Hi, welcome to Mechanical PE Exam Prep, Question of the Week, the series where I solve HVAC problems for aspiring professional engineers. I have another great problem for you today, and this week I'm trying something new. Instead of writing everything out by hand, I made some nice clean formulas using an equation editor. So after watching, if you have any feedback on whether this was better or worse than my usual chicken scratch, leave a comment and let me know. Okay, let's jump into this week's problem. An outdoor skating rink is 2,000 square feet with one inch thick ice. Incoming water is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the cooling load to freeze the rink in two hours? So we're trying to make an ice rink. We got this incoming water, it's 50 degrees. We want to make the entire thing freeze over and it's gonna be one inch thick. So one of the things they haven't told us here is the air temperature. If it's not below freezing, then not only are we gonna to have to cool down the water and then turn it into ice, but also we're gonna to have to compete with the fact that there's heat entering from the outside atmosphere. On the other hand, if it's less than freezing out, then we'll actually get some help from the atmosphere. Uh, but since they haven't told us anything about the air, we should probably assume that it's conveniently 32 degrees and that the outside environment has no influence one way or the other because we uh, otherwise wouldn't know what to assume. In real life, I'd probably want to be a bit conservative and assume it's a little warmer outside and uh, pad the answer with some extra energy. But as long as we're clear on the assumptions, then you could make a different set of assumptions and come up with a slightly different answer. But that uh, kind of outlines the approach you want to use. And they've also given us a time. So we know not only do we want it to completely freeze, but we want to do it in a specific amount of time. So the cooling load is heat transfer per unit time. And if the cooling load was very large, we could freeze it very quickly. Or if we only had a little bit of cooling, we could freeze it, but it would take a long time. So let's work through with a little more rigor. So first we can calculate the total volume of water that we need to freeze. We have the area times the thickness, both of which we know. So let's make a substitution. We have the 2,000 square foot area, and it's one inch thick, so that's a twelfth of a foot. Multiply those together. We get 166.6 cubic feet. That's how much water we have to freeze. And then we can define the rate of heat transfer as the total amount of heat that needs to be removed divided by the time in which it's going to be removed. So that T is going to be two hours. But the numerator is the total amount of heat that needs to be removed. How should we define that? Well, we can expand that into the sensible heat and the latent heat because two things need to happen here. First, we need to take that 50 degree water and cool it down to 32 degrees before we can even start to freeze it. That's sensible cooling. Then there's the latent component. Once we have it at 32 degrees, but it's still liquid water, we need to freeze it. So now it's solid water, ice, still at 32 degrees. So no change in temperature there, just a change in phase. So we're going to need to look up the latent heat of fusion or the latent heat of melting or latent heat of freezing. It, I've heard people call it different things and get confused by the fact that it could potentially be called different things. But the process of freezing liquid water and turning it into ice or melting ice, it's the same amount of energy per unit mass that's going either in or out. That's really the only difference is the direction of the heat transfer as to what you might want to call it. But technically, if you look it up in a book, it's the latent heat of fusion. So that's how I learned it. And that's almost always what I call it. OK, so let's expand on each of those. The sensible cooling has to do with the change in temperature. So that's MCP delta T, where M is the mass of water, and CP is the specific heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature. So it's starting at 50 degrees and ending at 32 degrees. That's a delta T of 18. And since we don't know the mass, we can find out by multiplying the density of water times the volume, where we already calculated the volume. And the specific heat capacity of water in US customary units is 1 BTU per pound degree. So that's the sensible. And now for the latent, it's just going to be mass times the latent heat of fusion, which we can look up. And again, we don't know the mass, but we can find out by doing density times volume, just as we did above. So let's add those two together to get the total heat that needs to be removed, the sum of the latent and the sensible. That's Q sub T, Q total. We can factor out the density times volume. And then we're ready to substitute in for each of those. So again, the density is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. 
the volume we know. The specific heat capacity of water is 1 in U.S. customary units. The delta T is 18. And the latent heat of fusion for water is 144 BTUs per pound in U.S. customary units. As you can see, all the units cancel out. The cubic feet go away, the pounds go away, the degrees go away, and all we are left with is BTUs, which makes sense because this is the total energy. It's not yet the energy per unit time. In order to do that, we need to divide it by the time. So right now it's 1.6 million BTUs. Now we go ahead and divide it by the two hours in which we want the freezing to happen. And we get 840,000 BTUs per hour. Again, if we wanted it to happen faster, we could divide by, say, one hour, and then the cooling load would be much higher or vice versa, if we wanted to give it more time, then we'd be dividing by a larger amount of time. The total answer would be smaller, which means there's a smaller heat load. And then we can turn that into refrigeration tons because usually when we're sizing a cooling system of any kind, we're gonna talk in tons. So there's 12,000 BTUs per hour per ton, and that leaves us with 70.2 tons. And that's the final answer. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this problem. If you're a mechanical engineer studying for the PE exam and you would like to submit a question, simply send me an email. It can be a specific example that you're working on or a general conceptual question that you're wondering about or a question about your study process. I'm happy to answer any of those, really anything related to PE exam prep. I'll try my best to give you an answer that's useful, so don't be shy. All right, see you in the next video.